So I have a clip that I want to share with you. This is pretty old. It is a clip from 2004. But basically, uh, CNN had this show called Crosstalk, and it featured one Democratic pundit and one Republican pundit. And Jon Stewart was a guest. And one of the individuals who hosted this program was none other than Tucker Carlson, who went on to become the most popular news host in America. And what we are going to see here is Jon Stewart absolutely humiliate him and call him a hack to his face. And, you know, Tucker Carlson, he tries he tries to push back a little bit, but at the end of the day, you can tell how embarrassed he was by Jon Stewart because they end things abruptly and cut to commercial break because what Jon Stewart was saying was making them look really, really terrible. Enjoy. I think you're a good comedian. I think your lectures are boring. Let me ask you. Let yeah. me ask you a question on the news. Now this okay. is theater. I mean, it's it's it is, obvious. No, no, it How old are you? Thirty-five. And you wear a bow tie. Yeah, I do. I do. So, I do. so this is. No, no, I know, I know. So you're right. No, no, let me just go. Now, come on. And come listen, on. I'm not, I'm not suggesting that you're I, not, you're not a smart guy because those are not easy to tie. But the thing difficult. is that this, you're doing theater when you should be doing debate, which would be great. You do deb no, so it's it's not, not true. honest. What you do is not honest. What you do is partisan honest. hackery. And I'll, and I'll tell you, you why I, I know You on your show, and you sniff his throne, and you're accusing us of partisan hackery? Absolutely. You're You've got to be kidding me. You're on CNN. Say. My, the show that leads into me is puppets making crank phone calls. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Well, I'm just saying, there's no reason for you, when you have this marvelous opportunity not to be the guy's butt boy, to go ahead and be his butt boy. Yes, that no, is embarrassing. I was absolutely his butt boy. I was so far, you would not believe what he ate two weeks ago. You know, the interesting thing that I have is, so, um, you have a responsibility to the public discourse. And you, you fail need to get a job at a miserably. School, I think. You need to go to one. The, the thing that I want to say is, when you have people on for just knee-jerk, reactionary talk... Wait, I thought you were going to be funny. Come on, be funny. No, no, I'm not going to be your monkey. Um, <laughs> what? What? I watch your show every day, and it kills me. I can tell you a lot. It's it. so... Oh, it's so painful to watch. Um, y you know, because we need what you do. This is such a great opportunity you have here to actually get politicians really off Stewart? of what their marketing anyway? and strategy. Yeah, it's someone who watches your show and cannot take it anymore. <laughs> I just can't. What's it like to have dinner with you? It must I'm be just... excruciating. Do you like lecture people like this? Or do you come over to their house and sit and lecture them and you know they're not doing the right thing, that they're missing their opportunities, evading their responsibilities? If I think they are. Look, I wouldn't want to eat with you, man. That's horrible. I know, and you won't. But the thing we I want to get to... We did promise naked pictures of the Supreme Court. Yeah, we did. No. Let's get to those. Why can't, in this book, why can't we just talk? Book. Please, I beg of you guys. I please. think you watch too much Crossfire. We're, We're going to take a quick no, break. No, 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 no. No, no, hold please. on. We've got, we've got commercials. Please. Next, John please Stewart stop. in the rapid fire. Please Hopefully stop. Hopefully he'll be here. We hope, we think. And then, did U.S. soldiers refuse an order in Iraq? They tried so hard to change the subject, he wouldn't let them. So what do they do? They end the interview immediately. Well, we've got to go to commercial break. They're so transparent. And now Tucker Carlson hosts his own show. He doesn't have to co-host it with a liberal, so now he can just, you know kick off guests like that whenever he wants to at his own discretion. Nope, done. Thank you. But I mean, Jon Stewart, he had them pegged. And really, he was speaking to a broader structural issue with CNN, which is their fake neutrality that both sides are equal. You know, is climate change real or is it not? Let's have two people on to debate it. That is horrible for discourse. It's horribly toxic. Because some issues, there's just, there's not two sides. They're not debatable. When it comes to the issue of climate change, I unequivocally denounce debates related to the reality of anthropogenic climate change because to even suggest that it's a debatable issue I think is inherently destructive because it's not debatable. The only folks who are trying to make it debatable are shills paid by the oil and gas industry. So I don't think that we should play their game and buy into this idea that climate change is debatable or that civil rights are debatable. There's some things that's not debatable. What the tax rate should be, that's debatable, right? That's debatable. But when it comes to actual important issues that have a significant impact on the future of the planet, on our lives, that's not so debatable. And what Jon Stewart was doing was speaking to that here. And he said, look, you're not debating your public hacks. 
Because they really did have this opportunity. If you have a liberal and a conservative talking, that could potentially be constructive. You can maybe have them find common ground, but that's not going to work if you're just dealing with hacks. I think that the only way that this format would work is if you get normal Americans, one normal conservative, one normal liberal, and I'm talking about working people, um, and you get them to share their ideas and, and you, you change it every single week. But when you get these like talking heads, these uh, shills for their respective parties, what does that do? That doesn't give us any insight into what working Americans need. It's not actually a real debate. It's fake. It's all, it's all political theater. And that's what Jon Stewart called out there. Now, the one thing that I will say where I actually agree a little bit more with Tucker Carlson is when Jon Stewart implied that you shouldn't really take him seriously. Sure, he has a new show, but I mean, it's on Comedy Central. He's a comedian and it comes on before Crank Yankers, where it's a show about puppets crank calling people. I don't actually agree with that. I don't think that we shouldn't actually take Jon Stewart seriously. I don't think that what he was doing was less important than any other traditional news outlet. And I'll tell you why. Because Jon Stewart actually did do real news. And like it or not, people took him seriously. So comedian or not, you don't get to use the but I'm a comedian excuse if you don't actually do a good job at what you are LARPing as. So, you know, I do think that he should have challenged John Kerry in the interview that he did. So Tucker Carlson called him out for, you know, basically giving him uh, this softball interview. I mean, it's funny because Tucker Carlson does that all the time with politicians that he loves. Look at the Matt Gates interview. And I don't even know, like, I don't think I've seen the John Kerry interview with, with uh, John Stewart. But uh, I mean, regardless, if you are providing people with a particular service and they take you seriously, I think that you have a responsibility to make sure that to the best of your ability, you make them more informed. And look, Jon Stewart did inform people. Back when he was still the host of The Daily Show, most folks who were younger, my age, millennials, we got our news from Jon Stewart. And it was great because he wasn't a Democratic Party hack, unlike Trevor Noah. He would actually attack Democrats and Republicans. He, he was an equal opportunity offender, but he wasn't a fence sitter. Like there wasn't this fake neutrality that he was trying to propagate as if Democrats and Republicans were the same. He wasn't trying to make this false equivalence. And so I'm going to take turns attacking Democrats and then Republicans. He always approached things from, I think, an objective liberal to left leaning perspective. And that's really what made his show refreshing. And now I haven't seen the daily show. So perhaps it's improved. But if you tune in, the last time I watched it, it just seemed like more Democratic Party propaganda, albeit with a comedic twist. But ultimately, what is important here, what message Jon Stewart was spreading is that mainstream media is doing a disservice to people. And now this clip is more important than ever, given how terrible Tucker Carlson has become. I mean, he's always been awful. He's always been someone who uses white supremacist dog whistles, but lately he's just gone full mask off doing straight up Alex Jones level conspiracy theories as it relates to the COVID vaccines and masks. You know, he is citing the great replacement theory. So Tucker Carlson almost single handedly is making mainstream media even worse than it already was. Corporate media, it was always bad. Having news be a business that's obviously going to create a conflict of interest. If your goal is to make money and increase profits, then you know, you're not going to make the news your priority. You're not going to make informing people your priority. But Tucker Carlson, he took what was bad about corporate media and he made it even worse. He normalized extremist white supremacist talking points. And I've got to say, you know, back then he was a little bit rough around the edges, but now he's by far one of the most effective propagandists in America. And he's the most dangerous propagandist in America. And when I say he's the most effective propagandist, that's not me complimenting him. That's me saying that when he spreads lies, he does so in a believable way. So unless you're informed or educated, you're not going to know. You're not going to be able to see through his lies and understand the way that he's nefariously and covertly trying to prime you to believe terrible things. 
So look, I'll leave that there. I thought that this clip was great. I might have even talked about it before on the program. I don't remember. But I thought that now it'd be really interesting to revisit it given how much Tucker Carlson has made the headlines and not the headlines that he's created, but made headlines for being really, really terrible. So yeah, I'll leave that there. It would be nice to see Jon Stewart come back, but honestly, it might be good that he's gone because given how things have been going, if he were, were around in 2021, I wonder if I would be disappointed in him. I don't know. I know I used to love Colbert, and now he is not great. So uh, who knows? But either way, you know, I thought it was fun to uh, revisit this clip. Tremendous, 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 tremendous